an amazing effort of desperation, an amazing effort of engineering to produce our first line of defence for, for what could have been a Japanese attack on Australia. It's a 1942 CAC boomerang, and I've got a bit of personal connection. It was my father's aircraft that he flew with number 84 squadron during the Second World War. It's really nice to be touching you know, components and controls that my father touched over 70 years ago. December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbour. Uh, and at the time we had uh, P-40 Kitty Hawks on order from the United States. Now, as a result of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Americans cancelled that order. So the government went to the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation and said, look, we are desperate, we need a fighter aircraft. You know, do you think you can do anything? And they said, uh, look, we don't know, we'll think about it. And the aircraft actually made its first flight in May of 1942. So it was less than five months from you know, the go ahead to design and build a fighter aircraft, which was absolutely incredible. I mean, incredible nowadays, but incredible then. There were probably less than a dozen nations in the world that could design and build, uh, build an aircraft, and, uh, you know, and we did it. And we did it in, um, in really, really quick time. So uh, Dad was flying uh, missions up to Meraki in New Guinea, looking out for Japanese, uh, predominantly Zeros. Um, probably a good thing for him, he didn't run into any of them. The Boomerang was not a fantastic fighter, and particularly against something like the Zero. It was initially designed as a fighter, and I, I think for you know, basic aircraft and bombers, it would have been more than adequate, but for a contemporary fighter of its time, it was lacking. It got re-rolled into Army Cooperation and what we would now refer to as close air support. And there it actually really did a good job, uh, supporting troops on the ground. And I think the pilots who flew it in that role did actually like it because it did afford a lot of protection. You know, it's a 27 litre 14 cylinder engine, so a lot of metal there. Um, armour plate all around the cockpit. Uh, very uh, good firepower with uh, two cannons and four 303 machine guns. Um, very, very well built, so it could take hits uh, from the ground and keep on flying. Um, and really supported Australian troops in New Guinea in particular um, very, very well. I think materials at that time were, were challenging and you can see that in the build of the aircraft. It's made of wood, it's made of steel, it's made of fabric and it's made of uh, aluminium alloy. Well, I can imagine it wouldn't have been easy. And then the whole design process itself um, would, would have been pretty challenging. You had an engine, granted, but getting the airframe and the aerodynamics and all those sorts of things right is, uh, is not easy. I think our engineers and scientists and technologists you know, have all that same DNA that their predecessors have. I think what we do lack is large Australian organisations that are able to marshal all those resources in an effective way. And we did have that, obviously, in the 1930s and 1940s when we built the Boomerang aircraft. I think we've got to create companies that uh, do that sort of things here and give all our young people the opportunity to work on some really, really exciting projects. And you know, I'd like to think that Nova's one of those companies. I think the boomerang is a great example of what we as Australians can do when we're really under pressure and uh, when things are tough. The vision and mission for Nova is to create a great company with great people that uh, solves problems that really matter. It's about having a go, it's about not taking yourself too seriously um, but understanding you're doing very very serious work. The world has got a whole lot of challenges and I believe problems like climate change, water security, food security, security in general, are going to be solved by really good scientists, technologists, engineers, mathematicians. We have amongst the best engineers in the world and people in the world. I think we've got a great culture and I think uh, the sky genuinely is the limit for us.